Ah, yes. It's, uh, it's Sunday in New Zealand, and I'm feeling very tired. I don't know why I'm feeling so tired, but I am, and um, it's just time to do some painting today. Sort of cruise day. This is my day off. The day where I get to just bum around and generally do what I feel like doing. So, uh, oh, the ad's gone. All right, sound is coming through fine, which is good. Okay, so I'll pull out the earplugs since I don't need to do that anymore. You will let me know if the uh, sound is not coming through correctly, and I will fix it if I need to. Okay, all right, so um, now um, you will find the start time for this video down in the description. Uh, my suggestion to you is uh, definitely click it on once I put it into the um, description if you're re-watching this video. If you haven't been part of my live streams before, uh, normally with my live streams, I will uh, present everything first and then open it up for questions. But this is my day off, so you are welcome to chat to, with me about Dungeons & Dragons, anything, whether you are a player or a dungeon master, while I try to paint these miniatures. So definitely hang around and we'll have a chat. Hi Joe, what's this? Awesome, I just got a Mimic Beard miniature today. All right, all right, we're going to come back to that. We'll have a discussion about that, Joe. Definitely. Let's let's um, let's um get into this, though. Now let's get my, my intro sorted out. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I'm not just going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons. Actually, I'm going to spend... This is my day off. I am going to paint a Mimic, a Dungeons & Drag Dragons Mimic. As it happens... I have a fondness for mimics, and I was uh, shopping for bits and pieces in um, the game store in Auckland, and I spotted these, and I thought, ooh, ooh, ooh well, that looks nice, so I'm going to have to grab some of them. And since I am such a, a fan, and I love mimics so much, I just couldn't help myself. I can't get enough of them. Um, I was tempted to buy two, uh, but I didn't. So instead, I have the Knowles's Marvelous Miniatures, this is the uh, treasure chest and the, the barrel. Uh, what I have to say is they're kind of tricky. They, they've got a lot of um, details and it was actually difficult to clean them up. So here it is. This is what I got. This is what I purchased. Now for those of you who think that I'm going to do an unboxing, um, it looks like an unboxing, but it's not really an unboxing. Honestly, there's no unboxing taking place because I have already, in fact, opened the box. Um, I just thought I would put it there just to make you think that I had. Uh, so yes, I have already opened it because there was some cleanup required. Uh, like all miniatures, right, there's always some sort of preliminary work you need to do. What I found was when I was cleaning up the barrel in particular, what I found with the barrel is there's some very, very delicate bits and pieces and some of the little tentacle things can wind up getting damaged if you try and clean them up. So I have cleaned up some of it. Some of it I have left even if it is looking kind of a bit uh, shoddy or there's too much flash where I don't want it to be. And I am just going to sort of paint around it and deal with it as best I can. Um, the one I want to focus on is the treasure, treasure chest for today because I don't expect to be able to do both. Uh, I have enough trouble trying to get one done in an hour and a half, so two would be just asking for trouble. So yes, this is what I've got. Uh, forget about the price tag, that's New Zealand, so that's unrelated to you. That's my price tag, and it, I actually got, uh, with these I think it was, buy one, get a second one at half price, so it was really worth my effort to go and pick them up. So, I'm going to have a go at painting these. Um, I'm going to start with brown. Often I will go with black and then go with the next colour, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, today I'm just going to go straight with the colours that I want to use. Okay, let's get this one stuck on to there. And just carefully squish it on without breaking anything off. Trust me, it's, it's not difficult to do. Um, you can do it. Alright, that's that one. And the one we're going to work on the most is this one here. I found the tongue on this mimic is the worst. Uh, it was just there was so much, so much, so many bits and pieces to sort of um, file off. I wasn't terribly happy about that, but anyway, it's done. It certainly was a lot easier than the barrel. The barrel was a pain. Okay, all right. So our first job is I'm going to start with the brown. I'm going to use uh, Vallejo uh, flat earth right now. So Joe, what have you got here? Awesome! I just got a bed mimic. A miniature today plus I have a an animated rug and a couple of treasure mimics 
or chest mimics. I've got a deadly room planned soon. It sounds like it. Reminds me of the uh, the tower that I had as a mimic. It was a, the whole tower. The whole wizard's tower was a mimic, yes. It's not wasn't my original idea or anything like that. It was actually part of an adventure um, um, booklet, you might say, uh, that was put out. And it had a lot of sort of story ideas in it for Dungeons and Dragons 4E rather than 5E. Okay, so we're going to put some of this on in the appropriate locations. I'm just going to be quite brutal and quick about it. I have actually um, wet my brush so the, the, the paint is a little bit watered down. But I don't want to spend too much time on it if I can help it, but I don't want to also lose the detail as well. So it should be about as thin as I can get it. And we'll just keep working our way through. Um, how's it going, Sector Black? Hello, hello, hello. Hello to you. <laughs> hello, Stephen. I just brought 14 miniatures today. I think I'll paint along with you. You're welcome. Absolutely. This is the whole point. Come and join me and paint your own miniatures or do your own crafting or whatever it is that you are currently working on. I wasn't aware. I mean, I, I, my brother had told me that he, when he did his painting and uh, worked on his miniatures in the past, he would watch live, um, live stuff um, if he could, but he couldn't find it usually. It was like pre-recorded videos. And so he would watch that stuff while he was painting. And I hadn't realized just how... Um, how much people tend to do that until now you know this is why I sort of hang out with people and also it's a lot less stress for me to just hang out and chat in the live chat and just paint my miniature and I don't need to really worry too much about anything I just do it just stick the paint on fluff around with it later okay if I'm not in the shot you need to let me know because sometimes I sort of pull the miniature back towards me rather than let you see what's going on I do apologize if I've done that. Uh, what's that, Joe? I'm Joe. Nice, Stephen. Uh, I just got my Bones 4 fan favorites I ordered today. Just got done gluing them together. Yes, yes. Uh, there's been quite a lot of, um, what is it, Bones 4 Kickstarter miniatures going up on YouTube. I noticed there's a lot of unboxing taking place. A lot of videos with unboxing. Now, let's see if I've got enough if I've got enough paint to get all of this covered before I have to move on. Maybe not, maybe, maybe. Something like that. No, it looks like I will have to actually get some more paint, which is fine. We'll do that. Okay, so stay there. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, hello, um Aiden, how's it going? Um, hi, how's it going everyone? Well, it's going pretty well so far. Not too bad. I bought a whole bunch of miniatures myself, as it happens, uh, Stephen. Um, I've got about six boxes of various different miniatures. I'm not too sure if I will actually um, open them in, on, on, on screen or not. Um, I could do that. It would be a very lazy video. It's kind of like Easter weekend, so I suppose I'm, I'm, a, I'm allowed to have a, a lazy weekend, right? Um, so, yeah, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. That might happen. It's probably going to happen now. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's just get that in there. I don't know what I'm going to do about the base because I don't really want the base to be brown, but I don't actually want it to be painted black either. I don't really want the bottom of it to wind up being black. How am I supposed to get a brush in there easily and paint both surfaces? Seriously? That, that's not really thinking about the process of painting. It's not like I can tear that thing off. If I did that, it'd be, it'd be ruined. All right, so we'll just keep applying. Oh, I'm just gonna just dab in. See, this is where I, I really dislike adding water to these paints because you can you overdo it so quickly. Where's my little, yeah, there's the paper towel. Let's take out a bit of water and then try again and apply into the crevices that didn't get covered last time. It should be going in, it looks like it is. Okay, um, Aiden, that's what I do. I put on my favorite D&D &D stream, stream videos and I can paint for like 12 hours straight. Oh my gosh, I don't even have 12 hours straight to use. That's, uh, those days are gone for me. Um, 
I'd like to think I could do that, but no, it, it wouldn't happen. I'd get into too much trouble. I've got too many other things I've got to do in my life. <laughs> uh, but I know what you're talking about. My brother used to do long hours of painting as well. He can't do that now, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Joan, I just finished painting a goblin tribe made up of 24 different figures from a company from the Ukraine. Oh my gosh. That is a lot of, that's a lot of work. Okay, so that we're going to put this one aside for a second, let it dry. I'll grab the barrel, and I think what I will do is I'm going to just clean out that brush, and I'm going to tackle it with, what am I going to use? I'm going to use a darker color. I'm going to use Al Bear Brown from the Dungeons & Dragons Knowles' Marvelous Pigments Monster Paint Set. We'll use them. We'll use a darker color for that one. Okay. Oh, so, I don't know if people have noticed, but, uh, what is it? The Legend of Vox Machina, Mo, Vox Machina, Kickstarter, breaks the record at $11.3 million to fund 10 episodes. That's, like, amazing. I can't believe that. I mean, I knew that they would get it funded, but the fact that they got so much money is just amazing. You know what it means, is if they can get that much money for an animated TV series... What's the chance they can get uh, enough money to make their own movie, um, live, live movie? I think it's very, very possible. I think give them enough time, and we might actually see something like that pop up. All right, so let's just see what this. Uh, this is a lot thinner, so I don't think I'm gonna. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot thinner, so I won't water down any of this. We'll just apply it. You can see how thin it is right now. Do the back of it. Do the back of it first. It's the easy area, right? Uh, sector black. What do you got here? Too much. Too terrible at um, artistic stuff to be able to apply anything seen in this video. All right. Oh, okay. That's fine. But I still like to watch. I'll stick to my homemade paper and tape minis. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, why not? If I didn't have the money, I'd, I'd probably have to make um, miniatures. It's just a, a reality. You can't always buy everything. The fact that I'm making a little bit more money now is just is the only reason that um, I've bought anything recently, actually. Otherwise, I couldn't have done it. It wouldn't have been possible. Uh, I got yeah, I don't know if I'm going to paint that base now. I'm going to leave the base alone. I'm going to paint it a different colour. I'll give it a different um, hue, a different hue of some kind. Stephen, hey Hurst, how's it going? I'm staring at a phase spider, but I'm not sure what colour they are. Uh, do drow hang out with phase spiders? I don't know if anybody hangs out with a phase spider. Phase spiders are sort of their own thing, aren't they? Um, my suggestion to you is, is go and watch AJ Pickett and his videos. He's bound to have a video on the phase spider. I'm pretty sure he does. And he can tell you a lot more about the lore of the phase spider. I, don't, I think he's probably the only one who will very shortly have done every single monster in the Dungeons and Dragons 5e monster manual in terms of uh, lore and information. So yeah, he's featured on my channel. He, you probably know him. You probably already watch him. <clears throat> But yes, <clears throat> good source of information if you're interested. Blah, 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 if you didn't know about them. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is very thin, this brown is. Going to take a few coats of this stuff to get anywhere. Not that I'm going to worry too much about this. It's, it's, the, it's the chest I really want to paint today. <clears throat> um, Aiden, what do you got here? Me neither. It's a problem I have to work on. Well, I'm not sure what problem that is, but dang, John, uh, that's a large group of minis. I am currently working on a group of 12 Bollywogs. Bollywogs are cool. I've got a whole bunch of them, so I haven't, don't need to sort of worry about painting them, fortunately. I bought them when they were really, really cheap. They were like 50 cents each. Those days are well and truly gone now, and the chance of being able to get something like that is almost impossible. 
This is back when, you know, there was a time where uh, there were lots and lots of miniatures available, and but people weren't really buying that many, or certainly weren't buying them fast enough. And I'm not going to recommend something like um, eBay for buying seconds, because there's just too many scams and too many poor products on there now. And if you, uh, if you want to get yourself into a whole lot of hairy, messy stuff, then sure, go for it, but I wouldn't do it. It's at your risk. Okay. I'm just going to just see if I can get the last little bits in the corners. And I think that has covered most of this. Yep, that'll do. That's nice. We'll get rid of that, put that out of the side. And we'll bring back the miniature that I'm supposed to be painting, which is this one here. Bom, 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 bom. Oh, um, Blanco has a um, Blanco has a channel, and he was uh, talking about um, the problem with online miniatures, particularly the seconds market. And so, if you want some really good advice, go and check out his channel. He has some good advice there. It's worth having a look at. Uh, okay. Now. All right, so we're going to just come back to that paint. Where's that brush that I had before? Okay. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of this brown on the back of it because it's just not quite thick enough, particularly underneath. So we'll attack it again. And, but yes, I noticed this currently um, Blanco's got a video on, what is it? Um, Animal Adventures, Tales of Dungeons and Doggies. <laughs> These are basically a collection of, is it 12 or 13 um, dog miniatures for playing Dungeons and Dragons. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, talk about cashing in on the um, interest in cats and dogs. I mean, YouTube was built on cats and dog videos, but um, if you really want to make a whole bunch of money, make a whole lot of miniatures uh, <laughs> that are cats and dogs, and you're going to do very well. So yes. I thought that was hilarious, and and they look quite cool. I mean, uh, I imagine they're quite expensive, but yes, I thought it was uh, very entertaining. He's got a very good video on the topic, and apparently, um, there may be another series coming out, kind of like that. That's very animal um, based or themed in some way. All right, let's just clean off my brush, grab my cloth. Okay. Uh, what's that? Um, Sector Black. Yes, for me, for the adventures of Grog and Scanlan. The adventures of Grog and Scanlan. Well, I mean, some of the best characters out there, right? So it makes an awful lot of sense. Who wouldn't want to have it? I know I would. I'd watch it. I, I mean, when I get the opportunity, I do watch Critical Role. It's just having enough time in the day to make it happen. It's just not always possible. All right, so what am I going to use next? I'm using, this is a Citadel paint called uh, Nagaroth Night. So it's very purplish. I used it for the purple worm. I do have a range of purples I can use. But I think I'm going to start with this. I'm going to attack the tongue. Well, does it mean attack the tongue? Or I'm, just going to, I'm going to paint the tongue, basically. All right, so that's hopefully enough. And what's it going on like? Okay, so we'll just, we will thin that down. Citadel paints are a little bit thicker, aren't they? Not quite so much medium in them. And, and a little bit more. Okay, so that seems all right. Okay, so let's paint this tongue purple. We'll start with that, and then we'll put some different colors on it. <laughs> um, what's that, Joan? I have three more goblin tribes to paint after my first. Oh my gosh, are you playing um, Warhammer Fantasy or something like that? Are you, are you, is this a, um, a Games Workshop army that you're putting together? I, re I remember those days, I remember painting a lot of miniatures for, for armies. And it took you ages, and there's, uh, painting the same thing over and over again 
it can get very tedious very quickly unless of course you paint everything slightly differently which of course just stretches out the job even further okay let's just get more paint on there try to this is the this is the bit that I'm not quite so happy about painting inside the mouth is gonna really suck <laughs> really suck Let's just thin that down a little bit more. Purple, 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 purple. Um, hi James, how's it going? Is that Joe? I was just watching AJ Pickett's live stream before yours. Yeah, no, so was I, actually. Just before I had to set up, I was watching AJ myself. Uh, listening to what he had to say. I try to watch the stuff as often as I can. He produces a lot of content, so it's hard to keep up with sometimes. And uh, he, fairly extensive videos too, so it takes a little bit of time to get through them. So yeah, but happy Easter to you, James. And Jones got 15 bollywogs. Mm. I'm not sure why you retracted the message, um, James, but I'm sure you'll let me know. Is it just got typed in incorrectly or something? Hey, um, I, I'm going to have to apologize a little bit about yesterday's video, which was um, titled D&D uh, &D Teamwork Like the Shazam Family. And I know for a lot of you who haven't actually seen the movie, that just sort of restricted your ability to watch that video. And because there really aren't that, there really isn't that many, there really isn't videos on Dungeons and Dragons and teamwork. Um, I have actually made it really difficult for people, and I totally understand if you're a little bit annoyed by that fact. It's a good video, but of course you kind of have to go and see the movie before you can watch the video. So I have decided that I will at some point make the effort to make another Dungeons and Dragons teamwork video but it will be more advanced and more complicated uh, for those of you who are interested and if you're not interested then that's fine too um, I'm not sure how I'm going to get in that mouth this is th oh that mouth is going to cause me so much trouble I should have painted black in there first should have gone in there black and then gone purple or maybe I'll just go purple and just not worry about it and let the uh, the ink wash do all the work What's that, Stephen? Ha, huh, I have um, AJ playing in the background. I was looking through his videos last night before I had to run more Mr. Wrath, um, Wraith uh, today. He didn't have anything I could find on Wraith, so yours, saw yours though. Yep, good, excellent. I'm glad it was of some help to you. All right, so this is still not done. I need a different brush. I just, I can't get in there with this thing. And I need to get around... I'm kind of trying to base it off what I saw in the monster manual, but it's, I don't know if it's necessarily going to work. Let's just see what paint is left on here, and if I have to grab some more, I will. No, it's not enough. I've got a smaller brush. What am I working with right now? I've, the, the, those were all just scrappy brushes. This is, this is the layered brush. I don't, why am I using a layered brush? I don't need a layered brush. That's too fine. I need it small, just a standard Citadel brush will do fine. Thank you very much. We'll do that one and put out a bit more paint. Uh, where is it? Where is the paint? There it is. I found you. I found you. Aiden, I got some stuff off of eBay and I have gotten burned. I haven't got burned yet, so I decided... Oh, what? And I have gotten burned. Yet so I decided to stop while I am ahead instead buy from my local game store, got to support the local businesses. Yeah, it's it's a bit tricky that one, eh? Because, you know, I noticed that a lot of the local businesses get a little bit carried away in terms of their pricing. It depends, you know, for, for me in New Zealand, you know, somebody in Tauranga will price very differently compared to somebody in, in, in Auckland or um, somebody in... Uh, Christchurch and so it does make it difficult if if they are pricing themselves out of the market and of course if you there aren't too many options if you're in New Zealand you really can't buy online and, and have it be cheaper 
it just doesn't really work out because of the shipping um, costs. Uh, so therefore, you you have you have to really buy local for a lot of things. The only thing you can get away with is books. Miniatures just isn't going to happen. So you have to buy local. But I do feel like sometimes they do price themselves out of the market and make it a little bit difficult for people to get uh, what they would like to get hold of. Okay, uh, James, what do you got here? I haven't got any uh, Knowles' miniatures yet, but how do they compare in price and quality to, say, Reaper Bones? Well, Reaper Bones, for me in New Zealand, if I buy them, they're a, if as long as it's not one of the big sets, you know, it's not a, like a set of goblins or skeletons or something like that, I'm going to be paying about 3 or $4 American. Once I get the exchange rate sorted out, then it's going to be, I think it's something like for the three or four, so it's going to be about five dollars. And then once I've paid that five dollars, I've still got to get it shipped to my location. So as a as a general rule, the shipping is about as much as the miniature. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh! So if you do any kind of shipping, you really want to buy a lot all at once. Uh, whereas I can buy this and the other miniature that I got before. And that, that came to about uh, $10.90 New Zealand. So I feel like the unpainted Knowles' miniatures are are a good deal. You know, that they, they are actually worthwhile your time. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to paint that in there so easily. So that isn't going to go in the mouth either very easily. Okay, so I'm just going to paint straight over the teeth really quickly and get part of the gum and I'll come back and I'll do white later. So I feel like the Knowles' miniatures are pretty pretty nice. I know that um, the manager at the game store was saying that they are, they are selling a lot better than other products that he's got on sale. So that's that's usually a good indication, right? If they're saying that you know people are happy with the price. Now Here's the thing, I've got to make sure I get the paint where I want it to be and not make too much of a mess so I don't have to come back and do it over again. But, but still want to get it done quickly, or as quick as possible. Here we go. I have to get the smaller brush, I think. Smaller brush will be needed very shortly. Okay, so let's just get rid of that. I'm not sticking a good brush into that mouth because it'll just make a horrible mess. So I'm going to get a really shitey brush and try and jam it in there as best I can. Uh, so yeah, um, what was it? Um, I believe that that uh, Tales of of uh, Dungeons and Doggies has got another Kickstarter coming out called Cats and Catacombs um, Kickstarter. So that's launching. It's going to be like 13 cat miniatures for Dungeons and Dragons. Kind of really weird, I have to say. But smart marketing. They're probably going to make a fortune. Okay, right now, how am I going to get the paint in there where I want it to be? So first off, get a nice scummy brush doesn't matter too much and just try to get it inside the mouth yeah that is gonna work right because it's easy to get in there and the brush is just not stiff enough so it's not really doing what I need it to do if I water down the paint too much I'm not gonna get anywhere with it so this is not working very well I have to say let's try again oh Oh, you are going to annoy me, aren't you? Yes, painting the inside of this, the mouth on this thing is going to be a real pig. All right, so that brush is definitely not getting me anywhere. All right, so ditch that. That ain't working. Just try something else. Stay. Stay. No, it's not going to stay. <laughs> ah, dear. Uh, what's that? Um... What's that, Joe? Uh, Joan, for my Bollywogs, I'm using Hordes, um, Croak Raider. Okay, I look 
I like their look better. They look and they look meaner. Oh, okay, all right. I don't really know too much about them, but thank you for sharing. Now we know. Um, Joan, I play. I play by my own rules. A few years back, I ran a convention game called Ten Thousand Miniature Miniature Monster Battle, featuring ten thousand figures on a. Oh my gosh! At a convention weekend, that is just mad. That is crazy stuff. That is just unbelievable. I mean, I've brought a lot of miniatures to and conventions before, but that's that that's out of my league. That is a lot of work. Plus a lot of stuff to cart in the vehicle too. Hang on, let's just get this and give it a shake. What's that, James? Yeah, no worries on the month. Um, on the month, the natural shadow should sort out your uh, newbiness. Yes. I am a newbie, newbie, newbie. I mean, I wouldn't say a newbie, I'm just not that good. My newbiness? I, I'm just not a, a really good painter. And getting a brush in there is just sucking. Really is. Okay, all right. I got it. I think I covered it. <laughs> ah, dear. Anthony, how's it going? Hey Fred, I'm a big fan of Kujo painting on YouTube. His um, his advice on the LED magnifier headset and the wet palette was a great, a real game changer. Okay. Well, there are some really good people out there and certainly a lot better than I am. I do have a wet palette, I'm just not using it right now. Um, okay. Now I'm going to use the fine brush and just tidy up the purple. And then, okay, so where, what, what am I looking at? My eyes are, my eyes are just too old. My eyes are old and they're not very good. And my glasses are for long distance rather than really fine detail. And I didn't get the really um, fine detail glasses because they told me they really wouldn't make much difference compared to what my eyesight was right now, but that doesn't help me. Uh, ma, 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 ma. Okay. And now, I'm just going to... Sorry if you, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just tidy up along the top here. And a little bit more there. Ooh. What's going on there? I can't quite make out what that is. Oh, that is definitely supposed to go further over. Okay, so we I think we purpled it up pretty well, so we'll leave that. And next on the cards, what is next on the cards? Uh, oh, that's right. We've got a little bit of purple left, so I can grab one of these paint brushes. I'll move my chest out of the way. Um, what's that, Joe? Fred, I feel so bad for you living in New Zealand when you talk um, talk the cost of everything. Knowles' blisters here cost four dollars US. Yep, it is. Uh, and to be fair, um, ten dollars ninety at my local game store. This is the Livewire our Vagabonds game store in Auckland are cheaper than other locations. It's the cheapest location I can get them from. If I went anywhere else, it would be even more. But that's the, just the nature of it, you know? If you're dealing with an import uh, and you live a long way away, you pay more. We're lucky we get the stuff at all. Most of it comes through um, Australia and then comes to us. So I'm just gonna paint the tongue on this. And actually, I'm gonna paint the whole whole section. I'll attack the inside of the mouth first because that, that was causing me trouble last time, wasn't it? And hopefully this brush will... Oh, that's working better. It's just easy to get at this mouth. Oh, you... You the smog in the Yeah. There are some places in the world that cannot get um, Dungeons & Dragons miniatures at all. It doesn't matter. They could pay pay more and it wouldn't make any difference they still can't get them so 
lucky we have access to them in, at, all, at all, really. Considering how small we are. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think I've got that kind of covered. And what else have we got here? Um, James, laugh out loud. What, uh, what are they here like? Um, Seven dollars, New Zealand. N no, no, Knowles's, Knowles's, the some packs are like eight dollars ninety, ninety eight or something like that. Uh, New Zealand dollars, and then recently they've gone up in price, and they're now ten dollars ninety because everything in New Zealand's going up. Um, we've got deflation and inflation taking place at the same time. Which is not a good sign. It usually means that the economy isn't uh, ready to uh, truthfully collapse, probably. So we'll see how long that takes. Because I don't see anybody doing anything that'll help it. Okay. Alright, so let's move that out of the way. Uh, what else? Um, Jane, oh, what's this? Uh, Joan. You may be better off going into 3D printing. The figures cost pennies to make. Uh, yeah, but that, that's... Honestly, 3D printing in New Zealand is not cheap. You, you can't just go anywhere and get something 3D printed. That might be the case some places in the world, uh, but it does not. it's not the case here in New Zealand. And uh, buying the plans, I've found the, the plans actually you know, cost a bit of money. So unless you're buying a plan and you're going to reproduce it many, many times, it's not going to work out. Buying a 3D printer and getting it shipped to New Zealand is actually not very cheap to get a good one. Um, just looked on special, eight dollars mighty eight. Yeah, right now, like I said, I bought, I bought two of these, so I got this and something else, and it was ten dollars ninety. But the first one is ten dollars ninety, and the second one is half price, so it's still cheaper than mighty ape. Mighty Ape's price will be for Easter. Trust me, that price will go up very, very shortly. Um, okay, so now that I've got that on, I think what we'll do is, and what I want to do is I want to sort of um, brush it over with a brown. I'm just deciding kind of what brown. I think I'm going to use the the tan, tan earth. I used the, the flat earth before. Use the tan earth and give it a brush over. There we go. Um, usually I buy stuff from Mighty Ape if I, it's a last resort and I've got no other choice and I have to sort of um, fork over the money. Um, otherwise, it's not usually uh, my first choice. Which is funny because I know my brother-in-law swears by them, but I'm like, yeah, but um, I actually I've got things cheaper than that, so it might be working for you, but it ain't working for me. Okay. So I'm just, I wouldn't say I am dry brushing, but I'm just trying to hit that, and that'll do, and then we'll just, just in case I spread my brush too much, um, what's that, um, by the end of, of Ra, I would love a 3D printer. <laughs> Kickstarter has a sale on 3D printed uh, mini mini plants. Ah, oh, okay, James. As I said, you'll think I think you'll find that the exchange rate for New Zealand and other countries, particularly America or United States or even Canada, just doesn't work out in the in the long run. I have looked at the option. And I do have a few people, there are a few people in New Zealand who do use them, but they're using it for a business usually, not for just a, a hobby. It's not really a, an expense that a hobbyist can deal with. Not yet. I'm sure that'll change, give it enough um, time. Technologies, you know, all right, so this is not working. Let's just brush that off a bit more. Okay, and the separating again. Sorry, guys. It's rolling all over the place. It's rolling away. Uh, what's that, Joan? 
Fred needs a 3D printer like nobody's business. <laughs> Not really, I don't really need a 3D printer. The reason I do those um, those videos on crafting miniatures is not for me. It really isn't. It's it's for other people, because there aren't that many people um, doing crafting videos uh, for miniatures, and so therefore you know there's a space, and as you guys know, I tend to fill spaces in markets. When it comes to Dungeons and Dragons, I would have been one of the very first channels to ever do a lot of Dungeons and Dragons 5e rules, and I still do. Now you've got the likes of Critical Role and a few others who are doing that sort of thing as well, which is good. But for years, the only thing you could probably find was my stuff. And what else is there? Um, just got to take out the purple a little bit. Okay, that's, that's working out all right. The front looks kind of interesting. I'm not sure what happened there. It's like the, um, the paint discolored just a little bit. Kind of looks cool though. Um, what's that, Joan? A gaming friend of mine brought a 3D uh, printer for 250 US from Amazon. Absolutely loves it. Oh, that's good. Joan, are you in New Zealand? Just, just asking, because exchange rate for a 3D printer in New Zealand of 250 um, US, that's probably going to be, um, what would I say? I would say it's going to be 250 is probably going to be about 350 New Zealand. And then when you ship it, you just take the price of the product and, and just add that as your freighting cost. So it'll probably cost me like $300 in shipping, particularly because it'll have some weight to it. Unless, of course, it's really, really light, which I doubt. I know somebody told me that it was about $1,000 for them to get um, a 3D printer shipped from, um, and it was actually really hard for them to get out of customs. They were, they were all over it. I don't know why. Anyway, the 3D printer is, is not really something I'm worried too much about. I do this, I mean, to be honest, I've got so many miniatures, I don't really need to be getting more, but I just like doing it. It's like crack, isn't it, really? <laughs> um, sorry, <clears throat> that was inappropriate. <laughs> ah, dear. Okay, so that's looking all right. I think I'm kind of liking the look of that. It's working out quite well. Um, Stephen, I recently started painting minis and have been making up rolls as I go. I usually water down the paints to a thin wash and add a second and third layer after it dries. Well, usually I'll paint everything a couple of times myself. Um, two or three coats is usually normal, right? Uh, Joe, I started to pre-order stuff to save more money. I love the hobby, but we have to save money where we can. Exactly. The house comes first. I've got to keep the house. I don't want to lose the house. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's, that's good. I don't think I'll do anything more with that. I think that's going to just move that out of the way. This one here really needs that darker color on there again. Um, boom, ba -dum, boom, 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 boom. Where is it? There it is. That's the L Bear. The L Bear Brown. Stick another coat of that on. Ah. Uh, there we go. Oh, by the way, I don't know if anybody knows, but the stream of many eyes, which was last year, now we've got D&D uh, &D Live 2019, The Descent. So it's supposed to be three days of all-star cast streaming of D&D &D games and paraphernalia. So yeah, that should be quite interesting. That's not very far away too. It's um, All the details for it are on the official Dungeons & Dragons website, by the way. And there is apparently a new book coming out. 
for those of you who um, have plenty of money and feel like buying more books, <laughs> um, there is a book called Acquisitions Incorporated, which is supposed to be released on the 18th of June of this year, 2019. And it's supposed to have a whole lot of sort of player option stuff, uh, backgrounds, uh, and how to sort of build your own sort of um, franchise from Acquisitions Incorporated, if that's the sort of game you like. I feel like it's a very niche idea. Um, I wouldn't say a neat idea, a niche idea. I don't really feel like a lot of people's games revolve around just being a an organization that acquires stuff and then just moves on. I don't really feel like a lot of people play their game that way. I'm sure there are, but I don't feel like people are doing that that regularly. <clears throat> oh, what's that, James? If so, what were the results? If not, why not? Um, okay, so... Oh. Have any of you... Hero Forge, Hero Forge. Okay, so Hero Forge, what I can tell you about Hero Forge is they make really good stuff. Um, I've seen I've seen my players get stuff made up. It's expensive. It is very, very expensive. But they do make good stuff. You want to get the good plastic rather than the, the, the shitey plastic. And if you get it made in a metal, it looks just amazing. Um, and they, they're pretty durable. I had one until it got stolen. But um, yeah, they, it's, they really are impressive. I, I loved it. I had one of my players actually bought me one. Um, they asked me what I wanted, and then they built it, and then they um, got it sent. And it cost them quite a bit, but um, they shared the cost, and apparently I was good enough Dungeon Master to be, to be worth doing that for, so that's, that's kind of nice. Okay, so we are just finishing up the darken darkening of the barrel feel like I've coated most of it. Yep, that'll do. Put that out of the way. Where's the other one? Okay, let's have a look. What are we doing here? I um, feel like let's go with a, a pur purple. Let's do a purple. Let's work with the purple first and go from there. The bronze finish is really nice. Um... If my plus one is a hero, more power to them. <laughs> uh, the halfling barbarian on the hero forge. Right, let's just... God, brush, just go pointy. Gotcha. Ha ha! Ha ha! Now, what was I needing to do? I needed to find a different paint. What have I got here that I can use? I think what I'll do is I'll go with this purple worm color. It's a little bit lighter. And we'll go over the tongue and lighten it up in some places. And I don't think I'm going to use very much because I think, yeah, I think I'm just going to, I'm just going to just dab it on and see what happens if I just dry brush it a little bit. Not sure what, how much or how little I want to put on. Um, Okay, that seems to be right. Let's just see what happens if we go. Okay. Now, how am I going to get that big brush? I'm not. I'm going to have to shift to a different brush, Fred. That's what's going to happen. And... go purple 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 and we'll go along there oh. okay so that doesn't look too bad Right, shift, shift my brush out and get a different brush for the next step. Um, 
Yeah, James, I will cast one and bronze when one of my high level PCs retire or dies. Yeah, I had one in bronze. It, was, it would look really nice. Uh, Joan, I live smack in the middle of the USA, right um, across the Mississippi River from St. Louisiana, Louisiana, Missouri. Okay. Um, is that a barrel mimic? I do have a barrel mimic. Yep, this is the barrel mimic here. I feel like the barrel mimic is going to require a little bit more effort on my play, um, part, but I don't really want to focus too much on that today. So um, I'm putting it aside, and I'm going to grab my smaller brush, and I'm going to use this light color, and I'm going to try and trace along the edges and bring out some of the details. No, it's not necessarily going to be that easy, I know. There we go, just like so. A little bit more, oh, that paint is drying up. Let's just dab in a little bit of water. Okay, and that's not too bad. And then, how am I going to do this? Oh, I'm going to go stroke it that way. Stroke it, stroke it, stroke it one way. Stroke it, stroke it some way. And, no. Hang on. If I'm not paying attention to the live stream, it's because I'm a little bit tricky right now. Uh, what's that, James? I'm so far behind. Last book I purchased was Volo's Guide to Monsters. Well, I can totally understand it. it, it I mean, they haven't um, produced as many books as they have in the past, but there's still plenty of books. What is this? This is... Okay, so that's that little bit there, and down the side, where I want some ridges to show up. Okay, so... Ah! Come on, you. Give me just a little bit more paint. Just for just a fraction more. And then... Okay, so we just need to brush off some of this. Da, 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 da. And then, how do we get at this? This is going to be tricky. Um, oh. Need more. Just along that edge. And let's try it again. Okay, so that I think that's got the basics sorted out on the tongue. All right, let's put that out of the way. And where's my little slip? Uh, what's, oh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, second ed edition. Just have fun. Don't try to get everything you will break the bank. Exactly. That's right. Break the bank. It's all bad then. Joe, you mean, should I be with this um, bed mimic? I'm, th I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking I'll tell them, tell them, aren't you going to remove your armor before you lay down? No, <laughs> Joe, you really are lining them up for a, um, a beating, aren't you? 
Okay. All right. So, what do I want to use next? I think we're going to go with um, Vallejo's Oily Steel. I feel like that's a nice dark color. Oh, I could go with a goldish color, couldn't I? I want to go. Do I want to go Oily Steel or I want to go gold? No. Ah. Uh, okay. I go with the gold. Actually, I'll go with a brass. Let's go with a brass finish. So this is Vallejo's Brass. Let's try that out. I don't know if I've used this yet. The metallics are always a tricky one, right? Because they don't necessarily go on the way you expect they're going to go on. And you've got to mix them really, really good. Okay, so it's a fine brush. Let's see what it looks like if I put it on. going to take me a long time to build it up and then let it dry and no I don't think so no the browns is not going to go on we're going to leave that we're going to go with uh, we could go with the gold I've got the gold here oh now I've got a couple of gold so I could use this gold or I could use that gold which gold should I use Let's go with the darker gold, eh? Let's go with the thigh cream gold from the D&D Knowles' Marvelous Pigments. Let's try that one out. Okay, that's got it. That should be enough for now. And my little brush. I'll grab a little bit of paint and apply it. Oh, it looks a lot better. It's going to look a lot better that way. Yep, let's do that. My mama me 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 yeah, uh, no right along there a little edge there oh yeah come on little baby get in there and again And try a little dip in, dip and apply, dip and apply. I like this thrive cream gold, it's working out quite nicely actually. I wonder if I can just apply it to that handle and make that stand out. And a little bit more. Okay, and then the back. Hmm. And a little fiddly bits, fiddly bits, fiddly bits. Yes, yes, yes. Fiddly bits, fiddly bits, fiddly bits. Um, do I need it along the bottom there? Is that a ridge? It is. There is a ridge there. It's just all bent. And fiddly bits, fiddly bits, fiddly bits. There we go. So not too much longer before we get um, Avengers Endgame at the theatres. I will definitely go and watch it. I love movies, can't help myself, and Avengers Endgame is certainly going to be supposedly one of the bigger movies this year. I went and I last night I was watching uh, an Adam Sandler movie. Now I used to really like Adam Sandler's movies but they've become less and less funny over the years. And I watched a movie called Pixels. And Pixels, for those of you who don't know, is a really unusual and odd movie. It's not a particularly good movie. And Chris Columbus um, is the director, and he did like The Goonies and um, Harry Potter and stuff like that. Um, so he's done some good movies. But the script just wasn't that great. But what made it stand out for me was um, the female lead, 
And I was like, what are you doing in this movie? I don't understand it. I couldn't figure it out. And then they had this character. You could see there was something weird going on called um, Lady Lisa. And it's, it's like a, a character who's uh, like a, a male um, fantasy um, in the video game world. Um, this video game doesn't actually exist. But uh, they actually had the character in the video game show up. And I uh, had to say, um, that was probably, that was one of the more entertaining and amusing, particularly as she um, smacks, uh, <laughs> smacks everybody around, or smacks one character around. I thought that was hilarious. And it's played by, is it Ashley Benson? I don't really know her. And I probably won't bother following her. But yes, it was very, very entertaining. Um, more and more was the end. What I saw in the end was just hilarious. What could possibly happen if you wind up um, marrying and, and um, having babies with a, um, an arcade uh, personality? <laughs> oh dear, very screwy. Anyway, not a great movie, but I thought that's the, that was the standout scenes for me. Mm-hmm. Right, what have we got here? I've probably missed a whole bunch of stuff. Um, now I have to go. Love hanging out with you guys. I have a com um, computer to share. Not a problem. We'll see you later, mate. See you, John. Um... Do, 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 do. If you have a lot of edit edition, resell. I am collecting. People are gouging, um, gouging right now. Yeah, the limit, limited edit edition um, stuff is is really expensive. Um, somebody was talking about it the other day, actually. Uh, what's that, James? When are you doing a Q and A next? Um, I feel like asking lots of questions, but don't want to distract you too much while you're detailing. Um, look, James, just throw in a question. Put hashtag question, and then I know I need to pay attention to that, okay? Um, I will answer questions while I'm painting. That's not really going to be an issue. And usually you can ask questions in any, at the end of any of my live streams. It doesn't have to be a Q&A that I specifically did. Yes, yeah, so I don't worry about that sort of thing. <clears throat> Um, I've seen it for eight hundred dollars. What is eight hundred dollars? Oh gosh, that's Volo's the special edition. Yes, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's painful. Yeah, pretty expensive. Not a cheap product at all. Very, very, very expensive. Okay, so. Just working my way along the sides here. And I'm really quite pleased with this particular goal. This is actually not too bad. I mean, I will have to go over it, but it's not doing too bad at its first pass. And that is covering pretty well, actually. There we go. All right, so I'll just give my brush a little bit of a washout. Um, uh, what's this? Collecting minis. I got um, Strad von Zarovich. That's about as rare as my D&D collection goes. So, well, you know, it, it is what it is, right? Gale Force 9, nice. Gale Force, yeah, I have to get in touch with them again. Dear Jesus, how's it going? I'm late, but looks like Fred is still working sweet. Yep, I won't be here for too much longer. Um, but, but I'm here. What's that, James? It's cool. We figured out um, you would show up today at some stage, Jesus. <laughs> Let's talk more about Shazam. Yes, Shazam. No. I've talked a lot about Shazam right now, so I, I probably should talk less about Shazam. I really did enjoy the movie, though. And it's funny, because it's a Warner Bros. Warner Bros. Um, DC movie, right? But then, so was Wonder Woman, 
and that was a magnificent movie. It's, it's funny because every time there, a movie comes out on a superhero and if there's a female lead, I always go and buy it, even if it's really bad, just because you know, it had a bad script or anything like that. They're so rare. I mean, that, there's more of them coming, but that really, when you think about it, ultimately, hardly anything. Almost nothing, really. Which is kind of a shame. <clears throat> All right. I still need to see Shazam. Yes, dear Jesus, you do. You do absolutely need to go and see Shazam. I was just telling people not so long ago I need to do another video on D&D um, teamwork since I've kind of um, eliminated people from uh, watching that if they haven't seen Shazam. But I'll do one that's far more detailed. Okay, how am I going to get in there? That's a little bit tricky, that little spot there. Let's see if I can just... I don't know if that was great, but it got some gold there. Oh. I think the paint's drying now. The paint is drying too fast. On the brush. I still got to deal with warm weather unfortunately so it does tend to cause a few problems. What's that Aiden? I think I'll try and take my younger brother to watch um, Endgame. He loves Marvel. Well fair enough. I think it's a great idea. Go with family. Go watch lots of movies. Uh, James, I zone out for a second. What movie? <laughs> uh, that's alright. <laughs> uh, Anthony, what do you got here? Had a, what, a gorse fire to attend to? Ooh, 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 dear. No. Um, off duty now until Monday. Peace be with you and all. Good night. Thanks, Fred. No problems. We'll see you later. You're probably already gone. I've only just read the, um, the message now. So. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's not too bad. Let's deal with some of the stuff along. Oh, this paint is, it is drying. Oh no, it's just running out. That's what it is. It's not drying, it's just running out. I'm just running out of gold paint. Just squeeze some more out and we're all sorted. Well, I do feel like it is still drying. Okay, all right. It's just drying my brush. I'm just going to keep washing it out more. It's drying on my brush. Okay, so now um, straps along the top. My um, a question. Okay, James, I see it. I got it. I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready. What is the question? Create a three or four part module with a goal to breathe new life into the group. Things have been slow as of late. Running Horde of Dragon Queen, oh gosh, for six months, and I think we are still in Greenest Town. Oh my gosh, James, oh dear. Okay, um, I can already see the problems because you're running Horde of the Dragon Queen, and I, I absolutely, my players didn't actually mind the adventure. I just couldn't stand it myself. As a dungeon master, it was just a pain in the ass. <clears throat> Pardon my French. Anyway, here we go. Um... Three core players, including myself, are working on the module and any ideas to spark the fire back into life? Setting, theme, power, level, etc. Well, I, I can't really give you ideas on, on, a, on a group who you know more about than I do. I don't know what you, what are you guys interested in? You know, those, those are the things you've got to ask yourself. When people start saying, you know, have you got some ideas for me? Um, I know I did ask some questions to, from, from people and say, look, did you want me to do more story and character stuff on the channel? Which I will do. Um, it just takes more time to do that sort of stuff. And I've got to come up with the ideas as well. And then I've got to have the material ready to pre prepare it and present it as a video. Which I am happy to do, but you will just won't get a lot of it all at once. Um, it will sort of be sporadic. And I do have some material, which I just got to sit down and put together properly. 
and it's really about random encounters, not so much big expansive stories, but pay, maybe it will help you sort of um, develop some ideas from there. My suggestion is figure out what you like. Dear Jesus, Dragon Queen, a good module? I wouldn't say it's a good module. I started doing a dungeon master guide for it and then I got bored and annoyed with it and stopped. Uh, whereas with Lost Mod of Fandalva, uh, it's making me quite a nice um, sum of money compared to everything else and I've actually had a lot of fun doing it. So that's me, uh, my biased. Is it good biased? Is it bad biased? It's just my biased. But yes, I'm not a fan of that particular adventure. Okay. Come on you, just in there. So yes, I, I don't know if I can solve that problem for you, mate. Um, you really, it, it comes down to, like I said, it comes down to your group. I will eventually put some of my own stuff that I've made up on the channel. But it always takes time to prepare. Hence, you don't get a lot of it very quickly. Ah, uh, now... But I would consider your first port of call is all of the things that you particularly like. Whatever pop culture or um, stories or books or movies that you enjoy, start with that. Okay, so here, here's, here's where we're going to, I'm going to squeeze out just a little bit more of that paint. And then I'm probably going to call it quits there for today. And then go and do something else like eat food. I'm very hungry now. I feel like I could eat a dragon. <laughs> Uh, James, apart from removing battle grid and using um, turn timer ideas, what can we as players do to speed up combat? Um, combat up um, on live vids, always say six hours or six combats or some. Okay, what a load of bollocks! Yeah, look, I did a video on how to um, on my variant uh, initiative system. So if you if you type in variant rules initiative or group initiative you'll find how I run initiative. And it's very, very different to what people are used to. But it will speed up your combat in a, in a way you are going to be shocked by. Um, as long as the dungeon master can deal with it. The best thing you can do with um, speeding up combat, if they don't use that method, is to make sure as players you have everything prepared. Uh, that's not so easy to do because things do change in the middle of a a battle or a an adventure so can't always count on that sort of thing right okay and remember um, progress in, in your adventure is not based on the number of combats you have progress might have very little to do with um, combat I've had some very progressive and interesting adventures and I had no combat in them whatsoever and my players had no issue with that Maybe that was just the players I had at my table, but I feel like it is an indication that Dungeons and Dragons is not just combat. And of course, my my uh, my channel deals a lot with combat, as you know. Okay, that's looking pretty um, pretty good. I don't think I'm going to worry about doing the eyes today. I feel like I've had enough and I'm ready to have a break and some food. Um, so I'll go look through the live chat real quick, answer any questions that I haven't covered, and then I will take off, because I'm ready for a rest. And that was fun, but yeah, I need to eat. Okay, uh, what else have we got here? Uh, James, it all boils down to combat year. Um, it, it lasts at least one full four or five hour session. We were fighting cabals at um, Watermill, Gabold and it took five or six of us like two sessions to finish it. Yeah, well, that's that's probably just a product of experience. The more what you need to do is roll your damage and your attack dice at the same time. Okay, so if you roll the dice for your attack and damage at the same time, if you have multiple attacks, then make sure you are rolling um, all of those attacks. So have separate dice colors for each of the attacks and the damage that relates to that attack. Uh, that's why often players have multiple sets of dice so that they can roll all of them. When you get to higher levels, you have to do it that way. 
because you're rolling like a, a handfuls of, or bucket loads of dice at any given time. Um, Stephen, I've been running Fendelva since the beginning of October. Three hours every Saturday. The players haven't done a single side quest either. I can appreciate what a slog some modules can be. Um, yeah, I think it's just a, a product of learning how to run combat. Look, I'll tell you what. I was planning to do it. I was going to do a combat tutorial um, fairly shortly. I was actually probably going to do one tomorrow. So tomorrow I will do a... Uh, I have got videos on initiative, but like I said, I will do a combat tutorial tomorrow. And I will play out the characters and the monsters at the same time. Which is really hard for one person to do and do quickly. And I don't know if I necessarily can explain it and do it quickly, but we'll see how long it takes. Although I might cheat and just stick in some really powerful monsters so they crush the players really quickly. And since I'm playing the players, the only person who can get upset is me. <laughs> and I'm not going to get upset. I don't really get upset when monsters or players' characters die because that's not really an issue as far as I'm concerned. Um, and Okay, as long as the players are cool with the slog, it should be fine. Yep. If you're not... If not, you may need to assist your players with help with NPC interactions. Um, Joe uses my initiative system and he likes it. And I... I bet the players like it. I'll tell you why. is because they can use it to plan and uh, they can hold their actions by just rearranging how things work. And there's no holding an action in Dungeons & Dragons. So they can just sort of, you know, when you're ready, you take your turn. And then by the time, the slowest person is going to be the last person to take their turn. So it works really well. Um, I have Murder Hobos, so combat really goes over three turns. Laugh out loud. They kill two Albears in two turns. It sounds about right, dear Jesus. It can happen that way. Uh, they then skinned the owls, <laughs> owl bears, their hides to make cloaks and head guard with <laughs> beaks. Uh, 1d4 piercing when used to headbutt. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is fantastic. Okay, so I know I haven't finished, but I'll be back to paint it some other time. And uh, this is more a day where I just get to um, hang out and just have fun. Um, so I'm looking forward to the Avengers movie Endgame and I'm looking forward to the new Spider-Man Far From Home movie. There's supposed to be a, there's a Swamp Thing trailer and I, I looked at it and it's like, it's kind of dull. It's really dull. I like the Swamp Thing, I just didn't like the trailer. Anyway, that's me. So if you found this video helpful or informative, haha, <laughs> if you did, uh, please share and like the video. Consider subscribing to my channel if you don't mind uh, watching this sort of thing. And uh, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live. Now you need to make sure if you hit, hit the bell button to be notified, you go into your settings for YouTube and make sure you turn on the notifications on a particular setting to make sure you are reachable. Apparently it's not good enough to just subscribe and hit the bell button. You have to go into your settings for YouTube and it rearrange and change that as well. Now, uh, if you want to support my channel, you did so by watching this very long video, or at least part of it, and I have hundreds more videos you can go and watch on painting and crafting and player advice and dungeon master advice and things like that. Uh, I don't do Patreon, but I have uh, affiliate links down in the description where you can buy stuff online. I get a small commission from the Book Depository and Amazon if you use them, and it helps support me, so I keep doing this sort of thing. And... Uh, I've answered all of your questions in live chat, but if you have questions um, that, that are not part of the live chat and you want to use the comment section, put your question in there. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Where's my dice? Where is it? Come here. Come here, dice. Come here. There it is. There's my dice. Okay, that's me.